going to sing songs that have a lot to do with Jesus, our Lord. I've been talking to him a lot lately. I hope you have too. It says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, Therefore God has highly exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen? And there's another little verse in Colossians, because I want to sing a little song later. It's just a part of a song, a chorus, talks about this. It says, For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. We just had an election, right? That's what he's talking about. Created all things, visible and invisible. Uh, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. I'm sure glad he holds me together. Amen? Right. We're going to stand and sing a few songs, and we're going to start with all hail the power, but would you stand if you can? But first, we're going to sing something different. It's Pastor Gordon's birthday today. He's 70. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Okay. 39. 39. to sing the choral version of all hail the power of Jesus name let angels prostrate fall let angels prostrate fall bring forth a royal diadem and cry
worthy of the glory. Say amen. Amen. God bless you. Wow, I don't know about you, but I feel like we've been having church. Are we on here? There we go. There we go. Don't you feel that way? I don't know about you, but I just, there's times that I just want to soak in the presence of God. Linda and I have been blessed to experience some some powerful moves of God in churches that we have pastored. And there's times the presence of God has been so powerful. You know, you just kind of want to soak it in. And brother, Dan, where are you? There you are. As you're leading us, I mean, I just, you can just feel the presence of God, right? Aren't you glad that God gave you feelings? I mean, we don't walk by feelings, obviously, but I love to feel his presence. I'm addicted to that. Is anyone else addicted to his presence? <laughs> Amen. So good to be with all of you tonight. And um, good to have our guests here tonight. Norm and Joanne, right? Uh, Bonk. And I've known Norm for a lot of years. When um, we were pastoring in Dawson Creek, he came and spoke at our camp and at our church over the years. And... Um, Oh, yes. Good to have you with us tonight. Uh, just a, a reminder, next Wednesday is Prayer Summit. And I love to see all of you at Prayer Summit. Now, I don't know what the habit is. This is my prayer, my first Prayer Summit at Evangel. Because we've been, uh, you know, before we couldn't gather because it was restricted. Now we're able to gather. And so this coming Wednesday is our Prayer Summit it's always, I think it's the last uh, Wednesday of the month. And so I hope that you'll be here. You know, prayer is such a key part to the church. You know, Young Cho just passed away recently, a uh, pastor in South Korea there. Uh, he built this church, and he built it with two main things. Well, there's probably more than two, but, you know, he had the cell groups, but he had prayer. Prayer was such a big part of the growth of that church. The biggest church in the world. I think it was a million people or something like that. Can you imagine? And built with women. Did you know that? Because men didn't feel like they could lead the groups and so he had to turn to the women. So you women, you have played an important part in the growth of churches around the world. And we're glad to have you here tonight. Amen? Yeah. Amen. All right. Um, yeah, I think that we have this little thing, you know, how many believe in signs and wonders? <laughs> she gives signs and I wonder. <laughs> and then I take the mic. <laughs> um, I'm just here. I mean, I'm here to be with all of you, but I also have um, a request from Pastor Nicole, who heads up our children's ministry. She is looking for mature helpers. We're mature, right? Well, that could be some of us. <laughs> anyway, if you would like to be a part of our kids' ministry, it's on Sunday morning. I am starting this Sunday, and um, I'm just going to be getting to know the whole program but I'm there to help, and I decided to start out with the preschool and kindergartners because they're lots of fun. <laughs> anyway, if you would like to help in any way, they need people that will be monitors, that will meet new parents at the door and show them the facility where their children will be. Uh, they just need all kinds of um, helpers. So I told her I would announce it because we have some great seniors that aren't afraid to get down with kids. How many of you like kids? <laughs> Not very many. <laughs> uh, 
oh, you're afraid I'm going to come to you afterwards and say, okay, I've got this for you. <laughs> anyway, that's just there if you're interested. And I have one other announcement uh, before we turn to Pastor Norm. Uh, you know, we, we videotape our legacy builders because there's some that's, that still can't come, you know, there are various reasons. But we are looking for a camera operator. And you don't have to have experience. Uh, they will train you and teach you how to run the camera. But we're looking for somebody that will run the camera. Because right now, if you're watching it, it's just a wide screen. And we want to be able to maybe narrow it down when somebody's speaking. And we also maybe want to try to, to get our worship on live stream. Because right now, we're not doing that. And, and part of the reason is because... It's very complicated. It's over my head. Uh, but, you know, uh, we, we like to try to get that going. But we need, we need some camera operators. So if you're here tonight and say, hey, I, w I wouldn't mind giving that a shot. Could you let me know or Marlene know at the back or, or Debbie back there? <laughs> you know, uh, if you could let us know, that would be great. Well, Pastor Norm, it is good to connect with you again. I mean, we knew him when he was in Alberta and now he's... Moved to BC. So God bless you. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Gordon, Sister Linda. Good to be with you tonight. And thank you for the invitation to come and spend a few moments with these great people here at Evangel again. It's been a little bit of time since we were here. Uh, Eldon, uh, Eldon and Marilyn are here. They were involved at that time in leadership and had invited us to come on a couple of occasions. And uh, I think it was July we were here, maybe August. I think it was July we were here and just shared for a couple of minutes on a Sunday morning. God is so faithful. So good to us. Praise God. Thank you, Dan. Good to sing along and worship with you great people tonight. And Dave Richter, my. That's some years back now. Dave Richter and I were involved with Huntley Street Ministries back 80s for me into the 90s. And um, that's, who was I talking to? Bill. Bill... Um, Absalom, there we go. So greetings from Bill, because I, I said I was going to Evangel. He said, you might see Dave say hello. So hello from Bill, Dave. And uh, what a network of fellowship God has woven together in our lives once we've walked on the gospel trail for a few years. And... Um, Many of my friends have gone home in the past year, but there's still a lot here. There's still more here than there is on the other side, and I know the fields here are white. I said to my wife, um, Linda, I'm so glad that your children's worker asked you to ask for volunteers tonight, because that's what I'm after. <laughs> volunteers for the kids here. So I'm going to back you up tonight, all the way. There may be so many volunteers next week that they won't know what to do with you. <laughs> I'm believing God for big things ahead of us. We have to reach our kids, saints. It's not an option. If we're serious about the gospel and the furtherance of it and the continuation of it, we have to be serious about the kids. Until we breathe our last. <laughs> Hallelujah. How about a kid's song? That'd be all right. It's called I'm a Promise. And you folk are all breathing air here tonight. And I know as long as we're breathing and the heart is beating, we still have promise of God in us that still needs to go through us. Uh, this summer, we ministered to a lot of kids. And it quickly became their favorite little tune. I'm a promise. I'm a possibility. I'll sing it, and if you know it, please join in. Well, I'm a promise. 
I'm a possibility, I am a promise With a capital P I'm a great big bundle of potentiality Oh yes, I'm learning to hear God's voice And I'm trying He'll help me make the right choice. I'm a promise to be anything God wants me to be. I am a promise. You're a possibility. You are a promise with a capital P. You're a great big bundle of potentiality. I know you're learning to hear God's voice. Keep on trying. He'll help you make the right choice. You're a promise to be anything God wants you to be. Now you can go anywhere God wants you to go. You can be anything God wants you to be. You can climb a high mountain. Across the wide sea, you're a great big promise, you see, you are a promise, you're a possibility, you are a promise, with a capital P, you're a great big bundle of potentiality. on trying to help you make the right choice you're a promise to be anything God wants you to be yeah amen okay praise God hallelujah there's still much work to be done I don't know how often it is but it's very often the Lord speaks to my heart don't say there's yet four months till harvest. Look, the fields are white. They're ready to harvest. Praise God. Donna Olson. Huh? Wow. I want to give a tribute to Donna and to her dad. How many here remember Donna's dad, Theodore Rudd, in Saskatoon? Uh-huh, there are a few of you. <laughs> All right. Well, I was a kid when Donna would come with her dad, sometimes her mom as well, and a sister, and uh, they would have meetings in my home area of Wolseley in Grenfell, Saskatchewan, and um, I was so blessed. Her dad would preach, and I would love it. I remember one night he was so excited, he kicked his briefcase across the front of the, front of the hall, and uh, it hit the door, and I thought, this is the greatest preacher I've ever heard. <laughs> I was impressed as he taught about the second coming of the Lord, and that message that he preached that night, I don't know exactly what he said, but I felt like, Jesus is coming soon. He is really coming soon, and I need to really know him and be committed to him. And so as a result of those meetings, I think he preached for a whole week that time in Grenfell. And uh, Donna, I don't remember for sure, but I would presume you were playing the organ or the piano and did some singing, <laughs> leading us in praise and worship. And it was, what memories. And then... Donna was married to Doug Roberts. And as a 12-year-old, I was sitting in the front off to the side playing, learning to play the guitar. I'm still learning. But as a 12-year-old, I was just starting, and I was sitting among a couple of cousins and a couple of friends and banjo accordions, and we were playing whatever. None of them plugged in. And it was camp meeting time in Grenfell, Saskatchewan. And uh, Doug was our camp speaker and Donna. And uh, that Sunday morning when we started camp, I can still remember I was sitting there attempting to play my guitar and, 
when Doug began to speak, he walked over to me, asked me my name, I think, and by then I was scared because I wasn't sure what he was going to do. And he said, I want you to stand. I want to pray for you. And I was a small 12-year-old. And he prayed over me. And he took my hand and he looked me in the eye and he gave me a great big smile. And he said, you're going to be a preacher. I thought, this guy doesn't know prophecy. No. I, I thought, that's impossible. I can't be a preacher. Brother Doug, you don't understand how I'm so afraid of people. And to stand in front of people would just, I'd die a thousand times the first time. But he'd spoken it. And at the age of 19, I began to publicly speak and preach, starting in, in uh, the Caribbean, the island of St. Lucia, actually, I can remember it very well, on the side of a mountain with a little um, oil lantern hanging on the tree. And three young men committed their lives to Christ. And I never looked back. I said, okay, God, if I can say something that will bless someone and help somebody find Jesus, you open the doors. I'll do my best. So how many years is that? I don't know, 19, that was 1968. So whatever that computes in years, it's, it's quite a while now. We've been preaching and God has favored us with itinerant work and missions. And I don't have time to tell you all about it tonight, but I do want to say something about prophetic words. Because... <laughs> The Word of God says in Chronicles, believe the prophets and you'll prosper. I was in my 30s and stopped to see my grandmother with my family one night, and she also lived in Grenfell at that time. She was already widowed, and she was probably about 80. And uh, stopped to see Grandma, and we had a nice visit. You couldn't leave Grandma's house without prayer. And she made sure we were going to pray together, and we knelt around her little rocking chair. And, and then she told me something. She said, in Polish accent, she said, Norman, when you were a little boy, three years old, Andrew, that's my dad, her son, her second oldest, told me you were going to be a good farmer. And she went with her finger. She said, no, Andrew, Norman is preacher. I was only three. And then I said, Grandma, <laughs> Grandma, I know God has always answered your prayers. That means I didn't have a choice. Oh, she was such a wonderful, sweet lady. Hallelujah. Joanne is uh, my very wonderful and beautiful wife. And uh, my late wife passed away, who was a good friend of Joanne's. And um, I was going somewhere with that, sweetheart. Do you know where? <laughs> We've been married for almost seven years, so she's, she's getting pretty good at knowing what I'm thinking and what I'm forgetting. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know where I was going. Marilyn said, you're sure looking good. And I responded to Marilyn that, let me say it to you first. Uh, Joanne is good looking, but I might still be looking good. There is a difference, right? And that's what I told you, Marilyn. You're still good looking. I, I, I'm okay. I'm looking good. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, um, Donna, thank you for the wonderful legacy you planted in my life with your family. And it's still there. <laughs> it's ongoing. I can remember Donna preaching and singing and playing the organ or the piano. And I would just be mesmerized by the anointing that God had placed on that lady. Wow. Praise God. So a few years ago, my late wife was very low with fighting cancer and 
somebody on the radio as we traveled um, on a Christian program said, I don't have heartaches by the number and troubles by the score. I have blessings by the number and favors by the score. And she said to me, you need to make a song out of that and sing it. I said, well, the melody would be easy enough to figure out. I never listened to it a lot, but it's one of those catchy melodies from country music. And so uh, put some words to it, and I'm singing it in the first person unto the Lord. So I just want to take a moment to sing this to you as well. In this day, when fear and deception, bondage, division, the devil's doing everything he can to harm us and hurt us. We are blessed. In Jesus, we're blessed. That's it. Hallelujah. Blessing number one was when my mom told me of you. Pretty soon I knew that I would learn to love you too. Blessing number two was when I heard my daddy pray. Then big brother lived so I could clearly see the way. Now I've got blessings by the number by the score Every day I praise your name Each day you bless me more Yes, I've got blessings by the number Your love has won me all And as I just believe your love You keep on blessing more Blessing number four was when you touched me. I never knew such love could ever stay. Blessing number five was when your peace came in my heart. Your grace says you will never go away. Now I've got blessings by the number, favor by the score. Every day I praise your name, each day you bless me more. Yes, I've got blessings by the number, your love has won me all. And as I just Believe your love, you keep on blessing more. Blessing number six is in the Bible. It says that you are coming back someday with hopeful heart. I'm waiting for the trumpet. I'm waiting now and trusting all you say. Now I've got blessings by the number and favors by the score. Every day I praise your name, each day you bless me more. Yes, I've got blessings by the number. Your love has won me all. And as I just believe your love, you keep on blessing more. As I just believe your love, you keep on blessing more. Amen. Thank God. Praise the Lord. (laughs) 
Bless Jesus. Thank you. Praise God. Hmm. Hallelujah. I was sitting, I want to talk about kids. And you folk have invested in what is called Love Reigns. And we've shared a little bit, a couple minutes here and there with you with that. But tonight, I felt God just put in my heart, just go ahead and tell a little more of the story. Because you have participated in helping us get that started to a large degree with your funds. And so we're thankful. But you need a little more story so that you know what you've helped do. Praise God. I was 13 years old. I started riding when I was three years old. And as far as I was concerned, horses were the most wonderful, beautiful creature on the planet. And I believed that adamantly until I was 13. I noticed at the age of about 12, 13, 14, there was another creature. Two legs. And for some reason, you know, uh, my horses, um, they just didn't have the same luster anymore. But I always liked horses. I used to say I loved horses, but I don't anymore. I say I love you, Jesus. I love you, my wife. I love you, brothers and sisters. I love my kids. <laughs> I like horses. I enjoy trucks. You see where I'm going? We only have one word for love in English. In the Greek, there's four. But we do have like, appreciate, thankful for. And so, love you, brothers and sisters, tonight. <laughs> Praise God. Still like horses. And God, God continues to give me uh, great blessings through them. So I'm 13 years old. I'm sitting at the uh, home base playing hide and go seek on horseback. God gave me that invention at the age of 13. And I would play it with some of the neighbor boys and cousins. I had a lot of them. And they'd come sometimes for weeks or even all summer to our farm in Saskatchewan. And I was sitting there. And, of course, I knew the coulee well where we played. And we played in the coulee and the bush and the pasture. And uh, They'd never catch me. I always got home free. And I was sitting there waiting for them to get back because I already had hollered as loud as I could that, home free. Remember how we used to play Hide and go seek. So I'm sitting there resting on my saddle horn, and I thought, this is so much fun. <laughs> I don't know if my, my cousins were having a lot of fun. They told me they loved it. But uh, as I sat there, some words came out of my mouth, just very quietly. I said, this would be so much fun if I could get kids from the city to come out, and I could help them learn to ride and Show them that there can be some really good things in life besides getting in trouble in the city. I didn't know that God was speaking prophetically through me to me that moment. It was whatever year that was, I'm not sure, but I was 13 and then in 1983, God spoke to my heart. I had heard about Circle Square Ranches. I knew Glenn Rutledge and hadn't met Reynolds yet. I knew David and Norma Jean. And uh, God spoke to my heart and said, you start a Circle Square Ranch in Saskatchewan. And I thought, well, how will I do that? He said, well, you have, you're, uh, you've got a quarter section of land. And I said, oh, God. Uh, yeah, I have one quarter section. And if any of you remember the Saskatchewan values of land, you, you know that there wasn't much there in a quarter section. And uh, you know what came to my mind immediately? I had a farming friend about 75 miles away, good Christian brother. And he told me that that would have been some, the year before in late fall I saw him. And he said, you know what I did last year? 
I forgot about a quarter section and I left the wheat lay all winter. I never harvested it. He, ha I forget how many, how much land he had, but he had a lot. A lot. And, and I said to the Lord, oh God, talk to Ed. He doesn't even know how much land he's got. <laughs> Why me? But I discovered something years before that. If we're available. That's it. If you're available, God will make you able. And I've proved that lesson over and over and over and over and over. Are you getting the message? Are you available? <laughs> There's kids that need you. Available. You're old enough to do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. So we started Circle Square Ranch. Opened in 1985. And to date, I'm guessing, I don't have the numbers now, but I know at least 20,000 kids and young people have attended that facility. Probably seven to 8,000 made first-time commitments to Christ. I moved to Edmonton because both of my teenage kids at that time wanted to go to Edmonton to go to college. And so we decided we would go with them because we didn't have any funding to help them. But we felt a tug that we should just be open to perhaps minister in Edmonton for a while. And we hardly talked about it. I think it was like two days later, a pastor friend in Edmonton called and he said, Norma, I need an associate. Would you come? And I did not say yes. I said, we'll pray about it. But we did go. Weren't in Edmonton very long. And one of the pastors in the city that I met when he heard that we'd started Circle Square and had just left that, he said, we need a ranch here close to Edmonton for the kids on the street. And I said, yeah, I've been there and done that. that. That's behind me now. But he was relentless. He was a big German and he was relentless. He'd phone me. He'd talk to me. He'd say, okay, at least tell me what to do. How do I get started? I said, find some land. Get somebody to donate the land. Whatever. Get yourself a development committee. And that, I, then I, I messed up right there. He said, will you serve on that development committee? Oh, boy. Okay, I will. So we moved forward slowly. And uh, sure enough, wasn't very long. A brother called him up, said, I've got a quarter section of land. Would you look at it? If it works for you, you can have it. <laughs> so needless to say, then I was getting really close to a place where I had to make a decision because they were looking to me for leadership. And one day I can still remember being in prayer on a Saturday morning because we were going to have a meeting with this committee. I said, dear God, I, I don't really want to do this again. It was so hard. And the Lord spoke to my heart, and this is what he said. If only kids come that can't pay to be there, would you do it? Is the God stirring your heart? What would you say? In other words, the throwaway kids, the at-risk kids, the abused, the broken, the demonized, the handicapped. In tears, I said, okay, okay Lord, count me in. <laughs> but I said, my wife has to want to do it. So before I went to the meeting, I shared with her just about as briefly as I did with you just now. And tears came into her eyes and she said, let's do it. <laughs> and so we started Shiloh Youth Ranch just outside of Edmonton. I was about 05 or 06. We were here having meetings. I did a lot of itinerant work in between those ranches. And uh, we were here having meetings. And that ranch is still functioning as well, as far as I know. And uh, a lot of kids have come to Christ. But that one really 
broke our bubble because I did not know. Yeah, I'd seen a lot of kids minister to hundreds, thousands, but I did not know we had so many third world kids among us. Let me just touch on that so you understand. Every week, kids would come with a little grocery bag. I mean, one of those little plastic Safeway bags. That was their luggage for the week. Maybe one piece of underwear. One more pair of socks. Maybe a pair of shorts and one top. For the week. No bedding. So we quickly found out if we spread the word. We had a room. I don't know how big it was. It was a big room probably the size of that cafeteria area there. And we would stuff that full. People would donate clothing and blankets and stuffy toys and beautiful stuff. And uh, there was a lot of ladies, ladies went to work and made uh, quilts. We'd fill that room by spring. And by August, it was all gone. That was Edmonton area. But hundreds and hundreds of kids found Jesus. Delivered, and healed, and set free. So when we were, uh, I left that ministry, and it's still going on, like I said, as far as I know, but... We went back and were doing a lot of itinerant ministry, and we were here. Usually I came once a year to uh, the embassy church where my cousin pastors, and there were some other congregations as well, be in the area. And uh, one of the men from uh, Ted's congregation wanted to go out for coffee, and we did. And he looked me in the eye, and he said, Norm, you need to come here to Kelowna and start a ranch. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I'd like to live in Kelowna, but coming and starting a ranch? I don't know about that. But his look and the words never left my heart. And again, I felt, was that a prophetic question? Was it prophetic? At that point, my late wife was already fighting cancer, and it was an eight-year battle. She went on to be with the Lord. Just one day told me, she said, I'm going home. Be strong. Keep living for Jesus. There's a lot to do. But she said, I'm going home. I'm tired. A couple months later, she was gone. So... Peggy went to heaven. Guess what I did? I came to Kelowna and married Joanne. <laughs> and we're blessed. We weren't married very long, only a few months. And I shared with Joni that there was still fire in my heart for a ranch. And as I shared just a little bit with her, she said, <laughs> you got to do something about that. <laughs> got to do something about that. I said, are you on it? Are you in? Yep. 100%. Okay. So we prayed and we waited and we shook some trees, and bushes and orchards. And all. It's just, you know, the expression. And uh, looked at some things we thought were open doors. No, 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 it just wasn't happening. And then one day, Joni, one evening, she said, let's go see Teen Challenge. They may be interested in doing something and partnering and adding that to the ministry there. I said, okay. So the next morning was chapel morning. We knew that. We headed down there and uh, talked to some of the leaders. And there was immediate acceptance and warmth and said, yeah, we need to do this. And then they said, two days ago, we got 10 and a half acres, signed the deal at the top of the ridge just above us. And it would be perfect. 
Oh boy, here we go again. <laughs> now I want to rewind back to 09. 09, I was at some friend's place in High River, Alberta. And we were feeling like we should start another ranch. My wife was not doing well physically, and yet, I, in my heart, I felt like we should do something more in Alberta. And she said, I'm going to call some of my intercessors and praying partners and prayer warriors. Let's have a prayer meeting. Okay. So they came, and there was quite a few of them, but there was a man by the name of Dr. Dennis, and he prophesied over my life. And he spoke very clearly, very, wow. Wow. He said, this is going to be like a, a combination lock. He said, it's going to take some time. And it's going to turn this way. And then you're going to turn it back this way. And then you're going to have to turn it this way a little more. But he said, when that combination clicks, it'll open and the door will be there. And then he said... <laughs> He looked at me and he said, you will think you're too old <laughs> to do it again. And I shared with Joanne as we drove here tonight again. I said, I felt that. Even when we, as soon as Teen Challenge says, yet, yeah, let's do it. I thought, I'm too old. Nobody knows the strength that it takes and the energy and the commitment of time to get those ranches off the ground. And I remember Dennis saying, you're going to think you're too old. And then he said, but you won't be. <laughs> you're not. You won't be. Just do it. Oh, nine. And when did we visit Teen Challenge? 19? 19. Ten years later, which means I was 70. Not quite. I was just coming up to 70. We're kids, Gord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and so then we began sharing. Uh, the place that they got was a hoarder's place. alden has been there, I think. As, I don't know if any of you other folk have been up there to what we call Love Reigns now. But it was a hoarder's place. And whoever had owned that property had filled it with junk. Everything from, it seemed like, millions of nuts and bolts to a Euclid. Trucks, cars, you name it. It was there. And guess who got the privilege of cleaning it up? <laughs> Fun. <laughs> I, I know for sure Joni put more elbow grease into that work than I did. She worked hard. Last summer we lived on site with, lived in our trailer and she just went at it day after day after day after day. There was about 200 trees that we cut down, delimbed, shredded. That's all in firewood now and went for sale. I'm just telling you all that to say I was old enough to do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we got to share the vision here a few minutes ago. That's a couple, a couple of years back, I think, just about. And then uh, Pastor Will said, let's do it again, and we'll do some promotion. And you folk got involved, and you blessed, you blessed, you blessed. And so in the middle of COVID lockdown, and not quite done yet, in the middle of COVID lockdown, A lady called us. She said, I'm the manager of the Thrive Daycare, or after school care, she, she called it. And she said, I heard about you guys. Can I come and see you? Yes, let's meet at Love Rain. So she came up to the property, and we spent some time there. 
talked and she got so excited. She said, this is perfect. We need to bring our kids here after school. That was March. In April, we had a Saturday meeting with some of the kids that came, maybe 40 or 50 kids came. And then she said, we want to commit to this. Can we come two afternoons a week after school? Just two hours, twice a week. Yeah. By the end, middle of June, the kids and the parents that were, had come and, and the effect of that on the, on the kids touching their parents and telling them what was happening, there was so much uh, response that the manager of Thrive said, would you guys consider taking us for a whole day, one day a week in the summer? And we said, yeah. A few days later, she called. She said, you know what? There's a lot of interest. Could you do two days? <laughs> yeah. A few days later, she said, I can't believe the interest. Could you do three days? And about a week later, she said, I know we agreed on three days. She said, but I, I have to ask you, would you do four days? I said to my wife, now I do feel old. <laughs> we committed four days a week, all of July, all of August. The only days we missed were ones that had too much smoke. I think there was four of those. Three hundred and sixteen kids came. Half the story there. The rest of the story is they repeated their visit so often that we had 750 kids this summer. <laughs> Every one of those, 5 to 12 year old was the range. Every one of those kids heard the gospel were prayed with every day. And I never asked for a show of hands, but the change in attitude and the smile on the face, it was more than just horses that they were experiencing. We've had tremendous feedback through the Thrive organization from parents about the changed lives of their kids. Say not. There's four months to harvest. The fields are white. They're here. Brother Gary, you're here somewhere. Gary Kakashki, where are you? I saw you earlier. Is he still here? Back here. Up there. There we go. Sorry, Gary. So you probably heard your, your uh, granddaughter. <laughs> So your, your daughter-in-law called this week and she said, what's her name, Abby? Abby. She said, Abby is relentless. She won't leave me alone. She is begging me to come with her and do some writing. And we had invited all the kids to tell their parents they're welcome. We want to see them. We want to bless them. When we can, we want to pray with them. And so, thank you. Your grandkids need Jesus. And the younger they experience Christ, the better. Your great-grandkids need Jesus. The neighbor kids need Jesus. So, would you overwhelm that children's leader and say, I want to help? Don't put it off. You're old enough to get involved. <laughs> I know I'm repeating that, but that's one of my favorite lines. I'm old enough. I'll do it.
Oh, yeah. Hey, your kids are coming to see us again. Josh, Josh is bringing all of his, the kids in his, under his ministry umbrella. On uh, the day after Thanksgiving. And so I said, well, there's so many, we will try hard to get each of them to ride at least five minutes because they've only got a couple of hours. And we'll have a campfire and, and uh, I'll share with those kids that night. Yeah. So here I am standing and three ranches have happened and we're involved with this one. But I don't know if I'm crazy or God's going to make me younger. <laughs> Maybe like Sarah. Sarah. Give birth to more? Shoni's a lot younger than I am, so without her, I'd, this would have never happened. I know that for sure. So thank you. I get excited. The verse came back to me today, Gord. Jesus said, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll build my church. He's doing it. If you haven't heard, just in case you're getting awful, discouraged, depressed, afraid, don't. On one hand, we got a lot of evil going on. But on the other hand, if we'll keep our eyes on the Lord and his word. That's where we have to stay. We have to park there and stay there and give praise and worship. Day, middle of the night, middle of the day, in the morning. Keep praising the Lord. Keep blessing the Lord. And if you don't know what harvest field to pray for. Pray for the kids. The kids want Jesus. They want him. There's no struggle. Kids want Jesus. When I discovered that, I thought, oh my goodness. And then God spoke to me one night while I was speaking to a large group of kids around a campfire in, in Manitoba with staff. I think there was about 150 and I was speaking to these kids in an amphitheater style campfire area. And uh, as I was speaking that night, God spoke to my heart. And I'm talking a message. And he's talking to me. And he said, I have privileged you to minister to the greatest people in the earth. You often want accolades and affirmations from your colleagues. But I have privileged you to minister to the greatest. And not just in Canada, other nations as well. Seen thousands of kids come to Christ in India. God wants to save adults. It's his will that none would perish. I've had the privilege of leading elderly people to Christ on their deathbed. I have a saddle in my tax shop from the chief of police in Edmonton who was dying of cancer. And his daughter asked if I'd go see him. Six foot four, big, rough, tough man. I came into his room and introduced myself. Actually, his, his, uh, his son-in-law was with me. Bill introduced me. And, and I said, Fred, I've seen you on TV. Because he used to always lead the parade in Edmonton annually on his horse. And I said, Fred... I'm here to talk to you about your soul. I think we could visit about a lot of things and that would be great, but I'm here to talk to you about your soul. Are you ready to meet the Lord? 
Immediately, he began to cry. He said, no, I'm not ready. You want to be? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you pray this? And he did. A few days later, he slipped into eternity, and he said to his wife, you make sure that that pastor gets my saddle. <laughs> so I keep it. It's a treasure to remind me it's God's will that none would perish, but that all would come to repentance. Reach out. Thank you again for partnering. You know what partnering means. It means it's like you did it with us. That's what it means. Partners do it together. And so we get to um, be blessed and recognized for leading that. But without partners, it doesn't happen. So thank you. Bless you. And I thought if we could tell you that story tonight, it would encourage you and maybe inspire you as well to say, I'm old enough to reach some kids. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, Father, we're so thankful that you love us. You care about your people. You care about the little ones. Dear God, you care about the precious babies that we're losing to abortion every day. Father, our eyes are on you. We need awakening, oh God. We need awakening that will push back the darkness. Awaken your people. Help us see the fields. Help us pray. Help us be available at a level we thought maybe we could never do. Or we're too old to do. We thank you now that you're here. You love us. And Father, I ask your blessing upon this great people. Thank you for their partnership in love reigns. For all those that you've touched this summer and you've brought to your heart and to yourself. We love you, Lord, and we praise you and thank you and bless you together in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, dear saints. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Gord. Linda. Praise God. God is so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good to me. God, you're so Love him so I love him so I love him so I love him so he's so good to me. Wow, thank you for challenging us. As you were uh, sharing tonight, I couldn't help but think about a verse that God gave me before I came to Evangel, before I came to Kelowna. And I did a series when I first came here just off of that, that those verses. It was out of Psalms chapter 92. And it says, Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. <laughs> they shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and Flourish. flourishing. <laughs> Are you ready to flourish for the Lord? 
I don't know about you, but serving Jesus is the highest reward there is. And, uh, you know, maybe God will call you to to help with children's ministry, maybe to run a camera, maybe to be a greeter in the church. There's all kinds of things. Maybe to do some visitation. We need visitors to visit people. Shut in. So be open. That's really the, just be available. Say, Lord, here am I. And if God calls you to do something, he will equip you to do that. Amen? Amen. Amen. So thank you for sharing. Wow. I really enjoyed hearing that tonight. How about the rest of you? Yeah. Yes. Isn't it wonderful to know you're never too old? (laughs) My father was involved with children's ministry right into his late 80s. And he was sitting in a he was sitting in a, a, a wheelchair, no, a, a walker. Linda's father, and, and involved in VBS from a walker. <laughs> so, don't tell the Lord that you're too old. He doesn't buy that. All right, <laughs> let's just be available to Him. So, Father, thank you tonight for challenging our hearts, and Lord, we want to be available to you. We want to say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. Lord, there's something that you have for us. Lord, that you will just help us to to discover that, and you will help us, Lord, to step in obedience to what you have in store for us. Lord, these don't have to be uh, lean years. They can be the most fruitful years of our lives. So I speak a blessing over all those who are here tonight, those who are watching us online. I pray for them as well. God, that you will just help us to be fresh and flourishing. Lord, we thank you for Norm, Lord, and thank you for Joanne, Lord, and for the passion they have and what you're calling them to do. We pray you would meet all of their needs in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, that many children, adults, will come to know Jesus because of this ministry, we pray. So bless everyone that's here tonight. Go with us. Keep us safe as we travel home. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless. Good to have you here tonight.